Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for coming for this session. My name is Memo Rungui. I'm the Managing Consultant of Industrial Psychology Consultants. Uh, I'll be taking you through this uh, demo uh, session of uh, what you call the Performance Manager, which is a new tool that we uh, have developed within IPC uh, precisely to help you as uh, managers to manage performance within your organization. Uh, I find this tool to be very useful, my experience so far. Uh, the challenge that we see in organizations uh, when it comes to managing performance uh, relate to issues to do with uh, how cumbersome some of the systems are, uh, how complicated some of the systems are, and uh, just the, 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 the collection of information uh, to be able to account for every employee and how they are contributing to the success of the organization or the department. So this tool is basically to make your life easy in relation to documenting how each individual is contributing to the organization and I'll also give you a tracking tool that will help you to manage performance within the greater organization uh, uh, in terms of the scope of your organization. So it's basically like giving a farmer a combined harvest. I call this particular tool the combined harvest of, of, of performance management. You will be able to deal and manage with performance, manage performance very well using this tool. There may be, for interest sake, for uh, how many of you are actually using the balance scorecard? If you can just indicate, we just say yes or no in the chat room. If you can just indicate yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, uh, that will help me in terms of how we go about it. Just a brief background in terms of the balance scorecard, just two minutes. The balance scorecard is a, is a tool that was developed by David Norton and Kaplan, as you will be aware. And not only in the Kaplan, these are Harvard professors. They developed this uh, balance scorecard, I think it's now 20 years back. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, when I was still working for NST and Young then to attend some of the early sessions in South Africa when the balance scorecard was introduced. I've been a fan of the balance scorecard for a very long time. And I think it's probably one of the best tools on the market uh, if it's in the hands of the, the right people. That, that's how I have looked at it. So the balance scorecard is basically a tool to deploy your strategy. That's the main uh, tool. So when you are deploying that strategy, you can actually start from your strategy formulation side until you get to actually cascading your strategy through performance management to make sure that you monitor how your strategy is being executed. And this tool, performance manager, comes in handy uh, when it comes to that deployment of the strategy in the organization. So when you look at the scorecard in general, we are looking at uh, uh, basically three, uh, four perspectives of the scorecard, which is basically the financial perspective, the customer, internal business processes and learning and growth. Others prefer to add other perspectives where there's nothing wrong. But I think the, the, the thrust when the balance scorecard was introduced is, is that uh, it would look at a holistic picture of the, orga of the organization's performance. Pre uh, previously, as you'll be aware, and it's even now, there are some organizations that tend to predominantly uh, populate their performance indicators in the area of financial uh, perspective only and ignoring the other perspective. So the balance scorecard gives you a holistic view of your performance. And the good thing about the balance scorecard is that there is a cause and effect relationship between these perspectives. So you'll be able to know if we do well under financial perspective, uh, what is driving that? Is it the customer perspective? Is it the internal processes? Is, the, is it the learning and growth? And as we go through this presentation, I'll also show you a tool to monitor which other, which indicators or goals have an impact on which goals in terms of correlations. I'll also show you that. So that's basically what we look at in terms of the balance scorecard. But for you to be able to deploy the scorecard in the way, the fashion that we expect, and the, the, if you want to get maximum value, you obviously you need to make sure that the people that are using the balance scorecard are well-trained in the concept and also in building their own scorecards or scorecards for their teams. That is a whole process on its own. I will not go into that process of actually building the scorecards in relation to the training itself. But I'm assuming at this stage that every individual attending this session has got an idea of what the balance scorecard is, or they have had a, an opportunity to look at a sample balance scorecard. So this tool is basically for you to deploy your scorecards as a mechanism for tracking the success or, or failure of your strategy. So when you look at this tool, you notice that uh, uh, there is a, on the extreme left, as you can see there, you can see those are the, 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 the that's the menu. You have a dashboard, which we are looking at now. You have uh, my scorecards. Uh, my scorecard, for example, this is basically for an individual scorecard. Uh, because as the system is uh, is deployed, it will have uh, various security parameters so that everyone, no, not a single individual can see probably all the scorecards. 
but there are individuals like your CEO, they've got access to every scorecard and some of your executives, they can access every scorecard. In deploying, we also know that there are other companies that would allow every individual within the organization to, to see every scorecard within the organization. One of the things that people miss in terms of deploying the scorecards or any performance management system is that uh, uh, when you make performance transparent, it pushes people to perform better. When you make performance secretive, it, it, it forces people to hide. So the Palace scorecard gives you the platform to be able to deploy the scorecard and allow people to be able to uh, then uh, 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 drive the performance of the organization or their own performance, because they know everyone is there. It's not a secret. We're not just talking about personal issues. We're talking about the individual, the, the actual achievement. Then when you go under scorecards there, you will see on the menu, you can view all the scorecards. You can view the corporate scorecard. You can see the SBU scorecards, or you may want to, or you may have access to departmental scorecards only, or a supervisor scorecards, or certain employees. All this is part of the deployment of that scorecard of the process. Then you've got your action plans. As you can see there, you will see as I go through the reports, the, the, the system that you can actually have action plans. Then under reports, you can see there under reports, uh, you can say reports hierarchy. Watch list, I will explain all this. Then the summary reports is one of the most useful uh, components of this. Then strategy, this is where you're really monitoring the effectiveness of strategy using strategy map and the correlation that I was talking about. And I'll show you, uh, I'll only focus on the correlations because the, the strategy map has been deactivated. We are putting another platform to be able to see the visualization properly. Then the employees, if you want to measure based on your traits, it's also another component that you can include in the, uh, in, the in your in your deployment of the scorecard. Then the rest is really technical deployment of, of, of the scorecard. So when you come here, you'll see at the top there, you can see that fully completed scorecards, majority of the scorecards have been completed. If you over that, it tells me of the people that have been entered into the system, 93%, 93.7% of the scorecards are complete, ready and ready for deployment or they have already been deployed. This is very crucial, especially for HR people to know, even if you've got a thousand people in the system, you want to be able to know how many of these uh, people have actually got completed scorecards. Then you will see that uh, only 6.3% of the people do not have completed scorecards. They are idle, they are in the system, but they are idle. Then you come here, you also notice that there is a, what you call a watch list. Uh, and I'll go down to this particular element where you can see the watch list there. It, it's a summary basically showing you the, your top performers. Uh, you can decide how many top performers you want to see. Uh, you can uh, differentiate and say, I want to see the top 10 performers in the organization or in my department uh, separated. Then who are the poor performers in the organization as well? There is a section there. You can even go to view there and go to each scorecard uh, for that particular uh, in, in, individual. So that, that's the best issue, the best platform that you see when you enter the system. Uh, here is a summary of all the perspectives. Remember, we're talking about performance here and deployment of strategy. So it's, it gives you a summary at the here it's showing you the, the year to date performance of this individual. This performance has been tracked since January up to for, for year to date, which means the last performance entry is for October, because we are in, in, in November. So you'll see that this person is generalizing negative. And I will explain what that means uh, as we go. Negative performance depends on what type of deployment you have done in terms of your scorecard. So they are not doing very well as we get to the end of the year, they're in minus. And what it basically means is that this person is basically one way or the other, you can interpret it to say they are basically taking value away from the organization because they're actually losing value. Then um, financial perspective, you can see it's minus 0.63. That's the score, the performance score. Then customer 7.0, uh, uh, which is okay. Then uh, internal business processes, it's minus 11.7, uh, which is in the negative. That's the uh, same as the financial perspective. It's in the negative. The learning and growth, we are doing well, 4.5. But generally, when you look at this, because this is dummy data, if you are looking at this and you are deploying the strategy properly, there must be some relationship. Generally, we also expect that uh, if someone is not doing very well under customer, it's very unlikely that they will make money uh, financially. Or if someone is not doing very well under internal business processes, it's also very likely that they may not do extremely well And when you look at the, the, the other perspective. So there is a cause and research relationship, which I will show you uh, le later on when we look at uh, the, the perspective. So I want to go now. Uh, to uh, to the uh, before I go to the scorecard, I want to come here and look at the action plans. Remember, in your, in your deployment of the scorecard, you are not only looking at your key performance indicators; we are also looking at it, the action plans. Because, for example, if your goal is to grow revenue, 
Uh, uh, you can't just grow revenue by waiting for that goal to happen on its own. You probably have got certain strategies that you are deploying. For example, you may be doing marketing, you may be doing uh, outreach programs uh, to your customers, you may be going into new territory in terms of customer, in terms of revenue generation and market share building. And those are all the action plans that are there. So it gives you a summary. So if you are going for a strategy session or when you go into your executive meetings, this dashboard tells you the story about your performance. This still tells you the story. For example, in summary, this organization is basically showing the, the, the overall organization, which is the CEO scorecard. They are not doing very well in terms of performance because they're negative. When it comes to activities that are contributing to that this performance, which is the action plans or what people prepare to call initiatives or strategies, we are on 13.9% implementation completion, which means probably that this is where the challenge is. People are not uh, committing or they are not doing what we have agreed at the strategy session to make sure that the certain activities are done so that they can feed into our performance indicators. It's not happening. That's what it's showing there. So it's very visual and you can see how we are doing as a, as a, as a business. So if you come here and I want to go to uh, scorecards, uh, if I come here, so it's uh, logging out, it's logging me out. Okay, so if I come here, uh, I want to go to scorecards, uh, scorecards there. If I say corporate, I want to view the corporate scorecard. You can see the corporate scorecard there. That's uh, the CEO scorecard. So I'll go there and say, okay, what do I want to see in this corporate scorecard? I'm assuming it's already done. I'll show you how to then build the scorecard. So if you come here, you can see the view, the scorecard, view the dashboard, download the report, copy, deactivate. Uh, you can deal if you depend on what authority you have, you may want to deactivate but you want to go to see, uh, uh, view the scorecard. So this is the scorecard basically. In, in summary, you can see at the top, we've got the owner of the scorecard, who is uh, Billy Gilmore. The position is managing director. Reporting period, it's uh, 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 for a year, 1 January 2021 up to uh, 31 January 2022. If you click there, you may want to change the reporting period. It's entirely up to you. You can change that. Achievement, as, as you saw earlier on, minus 0.645. That's where the issues are. Then you come here, you can see that you can go to the action plans, you can go to trends, I'll go through the, all those with you. But on the extreme left, you can see there, there is a financial perspective. These are the weights, allocated weights. And if the weights are more than 100, to show you in red, if they are less than 100, to also show you in red. But you can also have the opportunity to change these. They don't necessarily have to be equal. But at the top level, I normally recommend that your, 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 your weights be equal. Because you can't say the CEO is only focused on financial, only and ignoring the learning and growth, which represent your people, or ignoring the customer perspective, which represent basically where the money comes from, or ignoring your internal process, which represent basically gener value generation within the organization. So when you come here, uh, as you can see, you've got your perspective there, you've got your goal, which is grow revenue, for example, in that case, uh, the KPA or measure is revenue. You can also choose what kind of unit of measurement are we going to use to measure the, uh, the KPI. Is it a dollar? Is it a percentage? Is it a number? Uh, all those things you can do there. It will help you when you are now graph uh, when you are, when you are showing this on the graph in terms of trends. Then the reporting frequency. How often do we track this kind of performance indicator? It's monthly. You can change it to whatever quarter, monthly, half yearly. It's all up to you. Because once you have changed that to 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 to, to quarter, uh, it, it it or to to any reporting frequency, it affects how the your information is going to be divided for purpose of trending or reporting. Then target period is basically your time element. This goal of achieving this revenue of 750,000 a year, what is it? Is it a yearly target? This target, do we need to achieve it within a year? Do we need to achieve it within a quarter? Do we need to achieve it within a month? So that tells you the time element. Remember, when people are setting goals, we always say the goals must be timely, which basically indicates that uh, these goals, when uh, uh, there must be a time frame within which the target must be achieved. So that's your target period. Then the baseline target is the minimum threshold and the stretch target is the maximum threshold. Others prefer just to have one target, which is basically a straight tag, a one target, not necessarily baseline or stretch. We find it very useful to have a baseline target, especially if you want to reward people. Why? Because if you don't have a baseline and stretch target, you may end up paying people an incentive or a bonus for what you're already paying them a salary to do. So when you define the baseline, you're saying, this is the minimum that we expect from you. And if, if you achieve anything above the minimum, we can talk, start talking about rewarding you. Uh, those that achieve above the stretch target really are your top performance. Uh, that, that's the kind of uh, uh, assumption and thinking behind having a best and the stretch target. Then you can add your actual. If you are adding your actual, it comes here. You can see November is not yet populated. 
So you can come here and populate your, your, your for, for November. What is required there, you can enter, but uh, because we are not yet in November, I will not be able to enter. It can also show you all the scores that, all the actuals that you have entered for the previous months. Okay, you can go January, you can go February, there you can see all the months. You can also add evidence. For example, uh, uh, in, in performance management, one of the best ways to make sure that performance is very solid and objective is to have evidence. If you say they've achieved this kind of revenue, I can come here and decide to, atta to, to attach a financial report uh, out of, out of, out of, uh, into that uh, particular uh, uh, into the into that particular into that particular document. Let's say I come here. Let me go to just to show you. If I go to here and say presentations, I just want to choose one, a building performance scorecard. Then I say save. Uh, then I can uh, I can close. I can actually put the give the name the link save. Then close. Already there is an attachment that has been put to 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 that. So uh, and under each measure, you can actually put a, an attachment. Then you can also come here. Uh, you can see there the weight, then the score. You can see the score there. Uh, that's the calculated score given the context in terms of the, the weight for that particular perspective. What is the overall weight? And if the uh, financial perspective is the higher weight, it will also have a uh, bearing on the score that you that you get. Then you can see there on the goals, reduced cost, cost to income. There's the measure. Our baseline is 32%. Our stretch is uh, actually this must be a percentage. But number uh, baseline is 32 percent, and our stretch is 28 percent because we want a negative trend. And our actual is 28.5 percent, and our performance is 2.5. Then you come to optimize working capital, working capital, uh, and uh, this should be a dollar. You can put a dollar there, and uh, you can see there the baseline target is 30, and the stretch target is 25. The actual is 37.5 a year to date. Uh, this is for the last month, the current month. Sorry. Then when you look at that. You can also see that we are not doing very well in terms of that particular measure. You can also go and look at the trends for that particular measure. You can actually come and look at the trends. How are we doing versus actual? Okay, you can see the trends there for that particular for that particular measure. If I go back uh, onto that particular scorecard, you, there is also scope to put a comments. For example, uh, you can actually track the comments that someone was putting as you are dialoguing about performance. Remember, performance is all about dialoguing. Your dialogue, you can see it's you, you, you are saying, this is very tough. I'm trying my level best. And uh, this was just an example. This is rubbish. Um, this is, these are just typical examples. But if people are really dialoguing and performance management system in the, is in that kind of mode where people are really uh, understanding the system and they're talking about performance every day, even in their meetings daily, they update uh, and putting comments under each perspective. For example, if you have not achieved a particular target, what are your reasoning? You can attach documents, you can put comments and attach documents in all that you can also you are also allowed to view the action plans related to that particular goal you are also allowed to delete the goal depending on where you are so that that's basically how you go through that but maybe let me go at the bottom then i'll show you how to enter the scorecard so uh, when it comes here you can see the overall performance in terms of this performance has changed uh, because of i've changed certain aspects there you can see minus four percent minus 4.57 percent which is exactly at the bottom there, reflected minus 4.57%. The summary performance of this particular individual, you can see it here. The summary performance, financial performance, it's a negative. We call it bronze. You can uh, give it another name. Customer, 7.07%. You can give it any name. Internal business process, processes is bronze, uh, minus 11.7%. Uh, Learning and growth is gold, 4.5%. Overall performance is 457 you also have what scope to put comments uh, in there. You can put your comments there. Then when you produce your reports, uh, these comments are also captured as you produce the report. But some people may say, okay, we've seen this beautiful scorecard. How do we enter the goals? So when you're creating your cookie, when your name has been entered into the system, your job title and everything, just go and click. Normally, if it's an empty scorecard, it will just have your name. We just go and create. You just start putting your scorecard. You put the financial, for example, uh, financial. If the goal is financial, what is the what is the the goal for that particular one? And the beauty about this, you, I'm sure you can see that. If there are other goals that have been entered related to uh, to the organization, you can actually uh, choose. For example, I can actually come and choose here rather than recreating the goal. It's already in the system. I can choose. The same applies with measures. You can come and scroll here. You can actually say if I want to use cost to income, it's already in there in the system. I want to use the uh, uh, staff 
turn off stuff, uh, stuff cost income is already in there. So once you can actually capture all the measures in your organization, it becomes very easy to create these scorecards. So if I go there and say cost to income, this is just an example. I put my allocated weights, I can put 5% in my baseline target cost to income. Uh, here I must put cost to income, not uh, cost to income, uh, 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 cost to income, so the, okay? Uh, so I can put a baseline of uh, 30%, a stretch of 25%. Then I can put a logical explanation, why do I want this goal? Why should I have this goal? You can put the, uh, the, 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 the explanation, then you just put cl uh, click uh, add goal. You can there and click uh, add goal to, 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 to that. You reduce cost, you can see, okay? So you, you can basically add as many goals as you want uh, using the same process. Let's say the goal has already been created and you want to just add another, another measure. You come here, you want to add another measure, you can, you can come here and say revenue, uh, revenue, uh, from new markets, uh, maybe we are targeting to to go into the region revenue from new markets. Uh, so we create another uh, another. I don't know why it's, it's doing that. Um, yeah, Nyasha, maybe uh, revenue from new markets. But there is an error there. But Nyasha, you need to check that error. So revenue from new markets. I need to start uh, uh, populating the targets uh, for this. I do not put the targets. Let's say I put twenty five thousand. That the baseline target. The stretch target, please adjust your weights. Is there are more than 100? You can see it tells you. Uh, then I put here, I, I, I can come here and put 30,000 as the target. Then when I want to put my actuals, it won't allow you until I adjust my weight. This is just an example for you to, to see how the system works. So that's how you, you do that uh, in terms of entering the, 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 uh, the, 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 um, the goals and measures. Very simple, straightforward. In actual fact, sometimes you can just start by entering all the measures. If you've got a record of all, we call it a measure directory of all the indicators that are supposed to be in your organization. Populate them into the system. Then and all the other goals that have been done before, if you think they are still related, then the people can then just go and they type, the goals start coming out and, and as they're typing. Very easy to do that. Then let's go to uh, an under understanding performance. We are still on the performance. You can go to trend analysis there. You can see here, it's performance trends by score. It's just summarizing your performance trends by score. Uh, as you can see here, when on the financial perspective, it's up and down, up and down. Uh, we are here, we are using what are called the lower, lower and upper control limits. When your performance is within the upper and lower control limits, there's really nothing much to worry about. There's no significant impact that has happened. What is happening in terms of fluctuation is very likely that uh, these are normal. Variation, variations in, in statistics. So it's not a, a major change, but you can come here when you look to customer in the month of March, you can see that the score was down in the negative, which means there was something really that happened in that particular month. Uh, it was it's outside the control limit. If you, are, if you use, you how, to, how to use the control limits, it's a, it's a different course altogether that we, 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 we train people on. Just understanding how to interpret performance indicators. We, we do that, David does that very well. Then we, you, you come to the internal business process, also showing you the trends, showing you the trends. These trends will also come up in your reports. You can want to go further and look at uh, uh, performance, grow revenue. You are now looking at each, 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 uh, each indicator and the goal, each goal and the, and the, and the indicator or the, the KPI. Here we are now looking at the performance in terms of the score only uh, for each measure, the score for each measure, the score for each measure, as you can see there. You can go further and look at uh, performance revenue now actual. We are actually looking at the revenue actual, not necessarily the score, uh, the performance score. We are now looking at the actual figures. What has happened to the actual figures in terms of actual trends? You can see the revenue is all within the control limits. There is nothing to celebrate, even in the month of June, where you find that revenue jumped. But the jump is, can be explained by natural variation. There's really nothing much that you did there. But when it comes to working capital, you can see in the month of April, there you can see that uh, uh, the performance jumped a bit uh, outside the control limits and also in February and also in July, which means there were certain incidents that happened in those particular months that could explain those changes, th those variations. And also when you look at your cost to income in the month of June, you can see that there was a huge jump of cost to income to about what, 48%. What could have happened? Maybe there were bonuses uh, that were given or back pays that were given in that particular month, all these are possible explanations. But in your business, you would have 
uh, these answers because I'm, I'm, I'm spotlighting that because it's outside the control limits. You know, those straight lines that you're seeing, those are what are called uh, control limits. Uh, if you really want to understand how performance works, then you can also go further and look at uh, the grow revenue. Uh, this is actual versus target. Now, we're not, we're not we, there, we're just looking at the trends. We are now looking at actual versus target. You can see how it's performing versus the baseline and stretch target. Our cost to income is performing versus baseline and stretch target. Very interesting stuff. And this is what we expect you to be uh, deliberating in your executive meetings uh, rather than probably focusing on trivia issues. Because your, what you capture in your corporate scorecard is you're capturing basically the essence of your strategy uh, as a business. So that, 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 that's, that's what you, you, you put there. So that's the analysis of performance. And I now want to go to, to action plans. I want to view uh, the action plans. Uh, I can go there and, and then say, let me view the action plans and see what is happening. In the action plan area, you can see there that those are the action plans for all the people that you are supposed to see. Uh, you'll see that uh, uh, where it says progress, progress is indicating the action plan. Where it says score, it's indicating performance on that particular measure. This is beautiful when you look at it. For example, if you go to the staff cost, manage staff cost, we're doing very well on 7.86. On, on progress, on our action plans to address issues to do with staff cost, we're on 46.75. I will click there and show you what it means. Then when it comes to increase employee productivity, we are on three point, the performance score is 3.28. Our progress on that in, in addressing that is on, only on 20.43. So you can see really progress across all these people uh, at a glance. You can see, you can see these are all the people that are in there. You can see in the organization, depending on your access, what access you have, you can actually drill down to whoever you want within the organization. I want to go to Alfonso, who is the HR manager. And, and look at his uh, uh, action plan. So this is a, a summary of his action plans, uh, organize, organize skills audit, 15%, uh, streamline manager, uh, line manager, HR communication, 25%, organize employee wellness program uh, day, 25, 20%, organize HR reporting training, 21.43%, develop incentive scheme, 42.45%, pay structuring, 51%. And you know the beauty also, if you click there, it can then show you the tasks, the actual tasks that are happening under there, under each one of them. You can see, for example, there was a brainstorming meeting with the team to get uh, activity ideas. This was done 100 percent. That's why it's cancelled there. Then you go to uh, uh, to uh, the next one. You can see get quotations. It's already done 100 uh, percent. You go to incentive scheme. Nothing has been done there. There's, uh, except Balascoca training has been done 57 percent. Then pay structuring. Uh, get budget approved, the budget has been approved. So th this is the beauty, you can really drill down to see what is happening under each individual in terms of uh, their performance. But then lastly, uh, uh, not lastly, but uh, in, in terms of, I know people love to see reports. How do we get into these reports and summarize? I'm going into a board meeting. How do I make sure that I get a report quickly for the, if I'm not presenting from the system, I may want to get a report quickly. Uh, 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 so what you do is you go there, uh, these are all reports that have been created, so you can say add report, uh, what is the name of the report, uh, Q, Q, uh, we call it Q3, executive uh, management, uh, management performance uh, report, that's what I want to create, uh, from what period, I want to start from January up to now, I want to submit that, then uh, I want to go to go get report, um, then I want to choose which, which individuals I want uh, the reports for. Uh, let, me, let me just show you something. Let's say I just want the reports for HR people. I'll just come here and type you know, human resources. When you click there, it will take all the other HR people, then save them. Okay. Uh, let me maybe use that. Or if I want to go back, I want to uh, choose specific people I will delete there. I want to choose the CEO. I want to choose the HR manager uh, because the, the, C, the board want to see how these people uh, are doing. Okay, in terms of uh, the, the group, uh, I want to exec uh, management uh, uh, reports. That's, uh, that's the group. Then I save there. Okay, uh, I now want to go to uh, 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 generate report. Let me see if it will come. Yeah, it's up. That's the report. Q3 executive management and performance report for period 1970. I didn't know I put 1970 to 1970. Okay, so uh, as an example, it's fine. Then it comes here, it shows you, this is the, the key to understanding the performance. You can see uh, Gilmore's performance, financial performance, 
customer uh, perspective, internal business processes, learning and growth, and overall performance there. You can also see Alfonso, who is the HR manager, who is doing well, better than the CEO. You can see average performance for the two of them is minus 0 0.9. You can have average performance for all the executives. You are the HR manager. You, you now want to, you are, you want to send this to the, the board. You may want to come here and then uh, input your comments. You put your comments there, your comments there, uh, and any recommendation that you want to do, maybe the, these people are under a, a performance development plan. Uh, you, you want to to put it uh, to put it there. That's how that's how you 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 put this report. You can uh, you can actually go back and produce this same report in PDF. Let me go to reports and go to uh, uh, the, the reports. Which one I can't remember now. Which one I produced? Uh, executive. Let me try this one. Executive management report. Uh, you can have a web view, which is what we were seeing. Let me go back. I want to have a PDF. Uh, a PDF report. That's the PDF report for the same performance uh, for for that particular that particular one. Remember, it's Gilmo and uh, Alfonso. This is the same report that we see, but now in PDF, uh, we want to send it to a client to to wherever you want to send it. You save it, and and we are ready to to send that report uh, to 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 the client. Okay, so th that's basically what you find. But I also want to show you another trick that is near uh, that you can use. Some people think ah, this is too complicated for us. We just want a simple, uh, a simple uh, model of managing performance. I will start by going to what is called a simplified model of the balance scorecard. A simplified, uh, a simplified model. I just need to come here as an administrator and go to simplified uh, model. A simplified model for all the all the levels that are there. Simplified model. Simplified model. Yeah. So all all of them are on simplified model. Then when I come back to here, you can see the performance indicators have changed the way they are they are represented there. They, they have changed, okay? And you can see because they are now using one target. For example, if you are using a target, your grow revenue target and your target is 3 million. It's now just saying, and your actual is 2 million. In calculation, you're calculating your performance. It's now just saying your actual versus your, your target. It calculates very simply. Uh, simplified and there are no non-performance if you use that kind of, 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 of target. There are no non-performance. It's, it's up to you what type of simplified uh, 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 performance target you want. If you go and I want to see my scorecard under the simplified version, you can see here what has changed. Is I now have only one target. I don't have those many targets that we have. And I'm doing very well. Yes, you can see they're doing extremely well uh, under there. So that's another version for those that not, don't want to be complicated. Let, let's go to the last one before I take a question. Uh, if you come here and they go to admin and I want to go to, to the most simplified, I come to models, I want to the, go to the what is called the performance tracker, which is the, the, the lower version of all the scorecards that you will find in the system. Uh, performance tracker, performance tracker, uh, performance tracker, performance tracker, okay. Then I come here, I don't know whether it will give me the dashboard. Yeah, there's a dashboard for the performance tracker. And most of the people are actually performing, except Conrad and Shipomazai, who are not doing very well there. But when it comes to viewing the scorecard, you can see it's just your objective there, goal, your measure. And, and your, instead of calculating whether you've got a rating scale, for example, where a performance score, it will just show you whether you are winning, you are, you, are, you are performing or not. For example, if you come to the overall rating here, you can see here where I'm highlighting. Say target exceeded, overall, the person has uh, exceeded the target. Target exceeded, that's the performance overall. Uh, you can see there are more people there, target uh, exceeded. That's how we, so it just uses that either you've achieved the target or you've not. Target achieved, exceeded, or target not exceeded. Very simple uh, for you to, to, to use that. We can even stream it further, where we take out some of the things that you may think are not are, are not are not uh, uh, important. Okay, so I want to go back to to my dashboard. I don't think I have left out anything uh, anything out of of of, of, of here. Um, the only thing that is probably missing here is uh, we are finalizing way if you put people on. Uh, performance improvement plans, uh, those that have been put on performance improvement plans, it will be showing here. And uh, their tracking mechanism is a bit different 
uh, when they are on the performance improvement front. The reporting frequency is much more frequent. The tracking is much more frequent. Okay. So if I can take questions, that's the summary for, for, for the performance manager. And I, I hope that uh, people will be able to, if those that want to use it, probably starting next year, or even as soon as now, as others have done, uh, uh, you need to, to, to make sure that you put it in your budget so that you can uh, 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 make sure that uh, you, you, you track performance in a very efficient way. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that for all these indicators, if, they, if, you, if you have got other systems where these indicators are, are, are stored, for example, in your financial system, in your payroll system, these can be linked automatically and you just put a date when you need them to be updated. So you don't necessarily have to enter them manually if there is a, if there is a system that is, the, that is running. And also just for any information, we are actually in talks with a, a South African company that will be able to market uh, uh, this in South Africa uh, because in South Africa, they don't have many of these. What is the, the what, uh, what they say indicated that uh, uh, probably the big companies that have tried to put it in SAP, but they find it extremely complicated. That's why we ours is the more simplified version. They're actually doing trial runs in South Africa for two companies uh, that we are doing trial runs. Then also Kenya, we have uh, yesterday with a discussion and a presentation with a potential partner there, so that we can uh, we can also sell it in East Africa. They will be our representative in East Africa. Uh, so we starting 2022. Uh, this will really be a, a, a massive, massive drive to make sure that performance is automated and Zimbabwe can be left behind. So that's basically in summary. And if uh, there are any questions, please feel free to, to ask your question. You can uh, just uh, shoot. You don't necessarily have to, uh, 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 to, to raise your hand. But if you do want to raise your hand, it's still okay. There's a question. What is the minimum number of employees for this program to work? And what is the cost for company less than 10? We can give you the cost, maybe units. You can you can email us. We we'll give you the cost for ten employees. You can even have three employees. It, it, there is no limit, or even one person who want to track their performance in there. It's all okay, and, and as many as you can. Even hundred thousand employees will fit into the system. And one other thing is that the database for this is uh, in the cloud. Uh, we do know that there are other employers who have uh, other companies that have said we want to house the database in our own organization which is fine. The only challenge with that is that when we do updates, they don't get these updates automatically. They will need to be installed on their server for them to be able to access the, the, the updates that, to, that, that, that will be coming out. Okay. Any questions? Hi, Memory. Um, thanks for the presentation. What I wanted to check is on the scoring. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, we, the employee scores first and then, then uh, they agree uh, the scoring with the manager. So on the system, how, how, how does it work on the scoring um, where the employee scores then agreed uh, with the manager to then score and then we can we get the final score? So what happens in this system is that uh, there is no, there is no, the employee only put the actual performance. For example, if you are in business development and your goal was to was to uh, uh, generate a new business. Uh, when it comes to, let me go to the scorecard. Uh, so when it comes to actuals here, if I go there, the employee comes here and comes okay, and say, okay, November, our revenue was so much money, they put in there uh, and save. Uh, what the role of the boss is basically to come and verify that this information is correct. They can also look at attached information. Remember, they can attach evidence there. They can look at the attached information. If there are any issues, they can comment or they could call the subordinate and discuss and say, I don't agree with this number that you've put here as your actual. There is no evidence to show that this is the actual. So there is no two scoring happening. The role of the employee is to populate their scorecard. The role of the manager is verification and, and authenticating the scorecard. And if they say fine, the performance can then be, can be approved for, 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 for reporting. That, that's how it's done. So the onus in terms of actually populating the actuals is on the employee not on the not on the boss like your pre, the, the normal performance appraisal where the boss has to put in the actuals and then and, and say you have performed this way in this case the the employee because the targets are so objective the employee must put in their actuals once they put in their actuals uh, what the next is for the boss to come and say okay let me look at the revenue this person says in january they achieved 52000 is that true uh, uh, you may want to go and look at the they attach the document to see their evidence. This I have just attached, this is an example. You see, you maybe look at the financial report, you, you look at the evidence, yeah, this is fine, 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 this is fine. 
uh, once the boss has approved all these things, uh, then this information is ready for, 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 for reporting. So that's how it works. So there's no two scoring. When you find that you want uh, the boss and the subordinate to score on the same uh, objective, uh, uh, objective uh, target, it, it means there's something wrong with the, how the target is being viewed. Maybe there are different perspectives in terms of how the targets are being viewed. So in this case, the subordinate input the actual, the boss approves the actual by authenticating meticulous verification, if we were to put it in, 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 in sex language. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Hello, um, uh, Memory. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I wanted to find I wanted to find out if you'll be able to then send us the same presentation on email. I caught on a bit late. I think I logged in at around ten past twelve. So I think I may have missed some stuff. And also, I think I would want to just go through it again and uh, process it as I'm watching it again. Is that would, would the, that be possible? Yeah, the presentation will be uploaded on, on YouTube today, and we'll give you all the links to to watch it. Yeah. Perfect, all the participants, you. all the participants, your email, we have your emails. We will send you the link first before anyone else. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then also there's the issue about the pricing structure. Um, mm -hmm. um, you are breaking. Hello. Had you discussed that uh, or employee? Uh, so I wanted to find out how that would work. What did you have? And if you have a specific training to use this particular system, when we then register with you. So, so in terms of pricing, it's a, it largely depends on the number of employees that we want to be on the system. And we can give you the pricing sheet after this, if you just send an email. We do offer a, a training, a user training. Uh, for example, if you're already using the balance scorecard, you think your people are already accustomed to the balance scorecard, there's no need to train them in building the scorecard because they already have their scorecards. We will just train them to use the system. As you can see, within an hour, I'm sure you had an appreciation of how the system works. The, 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 setting, of the setting up of goals and everything, it's intuitive, it's very simple. Uh, so you don't, you, 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 don't, you, you don't struggle with the goal setting goals. The automatic, as you type the goals, sometimes if they are already in the system, they come, the same applies with the measure. So we train them in how to use the, how to populate the system, their goals and measures in the system. And all that can be sent to you if you request for a price list and if you give an indication of how many people you want to be on the system. Thank you, Memory. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah, the, any other question that you may have? Yeah, Memory, also, can you yes. Hear me? yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, maybe I could not if I uh, had you when you saying, uh, when the other guy asked about uh, who inputs the actual and you said is the, the person being uh, reviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, what about if the supervisor has got a different point on that? You yeah, just the, change all the same or they have to be- They, they have to discuss. Know. They have to discuss. Have to, For example, let, 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 maybe let me give you an example. Let's go back to the goal that says grow revenue and the KPI is revenue. Maybe it's a business unit and the target is 75,000, the stretch is 80,000, and the individual is putting 69,000, and the, the supervisor got a different view. So which means the supervisor is not going to approve this performance uh, until, until they discuss with the individual. So the, we have to, the, 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 the variation that may be there prompted discussion. Say, oh no, I've seen that for October, you put 69,000, but uh, according to my own records, uh, we did uh, 45,000, not 69,000. What could have gone wrong, or is it this a mistake in terms of how you input the debt? The employee may have a different explanation and say, okay, uh, the, actual, the actual amount is 69,000. We discounted it, but it was not my fault because of whatever, whatever reason. So, so the, the, the dialogue must be there in terms of approval of the actuals. The boss's role is to make sure that there is authentic evidence to support the actuals that the subordinate will have inputted. Okay, I hope I've answered your question. Um, yeah, there's another it's okay, because I thought maybe you know, there's this what you call it the other supervisor next to all of us, or the, so the one up supervisor, the one up supervisor. Yes, yes, if uh, there is that uh, you know disagreement, then uh -huh. uh, he or she can also see that evidence. Yeah, that's, that's so very true. Um, my suggestion would be maybe there could be the 
two actuals, maybe. It has to be my thing here, but it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because we are really trying to focus people on objective data. What what should do uh, the actual in terms of changing that? What should ensue is the discussion between the boss and the subordinate. If they disagree, uh, we'll put a, an escalation button to say oh, we are actually disagreeing and we are escalating this to the one up supervisor. It will automatically then go to that person's uh, 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 message in the system or email to get the, the that kind of complaint. Then they can mediate between the, the individuals. That that will put it a very important uh, 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 contribution that you have given us there. Then there's another question here. The system is very good. Where does the discussion of factors that may affect performance come in? E.g., unavailability of key enablers, disruptions. How does this uh, uh, weigh in the scoring? Uh, yeah, this is a very important point. Uh, what the way we designed the system is that. Uh, Let's take, for example, on the grow revenue and the measure is revenue, and someone achieved, I will change this to, to 30,000. Let me change this. Uh, if it allow me, it won't allow me there, because it's already approved. But if, if, if argument sake is too below target anyway, for, 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 for its event, uh, for, for argument sake, if, if, if this performance, uh, uh, there is a, a, some form of a, a dispute uh, uh, in terms of uh, why I didn't achieve the target and what could be the problem uh, and there uh, are uh, factors to do with that. The first thing that we, when we're building this system that we, we, we talked about or discussed is, first of all, we must acknowledge that we have not achieved. We have not achieved our target. Rather than altering the performance, because what we are saying is, if there were challenges along the way, they must be discussed. We are now in November. And if the target has to be adjusted, it should have been adjusted way back, not on the day of assessment. So that's the assumption number one. Assumption number two is that whether there were challenges in achieving that target or not, the reality of the matter is that the performance has not been achieved. Whether to punish the support it or not, I think that's now up to the supervisor. In the comment section, the supervisor can say, yes, I know uh, your performance, I know I can come here and supervisor can say, I know, uh, sorry, I'm not the supervisor, I'm not the owner, so I will see. My performance was in is in negative. So I can come here and say my performance uh, is in negative because I was not well uh, the better uh, the better part of the year. This is a valid reason. This the CEO can then or the, or the supervisor can then actually say, okay, I think that we are not going to take any any action in terms of whether it was a negative because we understand your the reasoning. But the performance assessment does not change. But if this person was uh, at work, maybe January to May, and they are now, they are now, they are now sick uh, between June up to now, the targets can be adjusted, either the targets can be adjusted or the, 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 or the scorecard can be deactivated for a particular period, which is there's no sufficient, it's not possible to assess. All those things can be done uh, in the system. So, but your point is very valid. We're also going to take note of it as we review and uh, perfect the system. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Well, if there are no questions, uh, thank you very much for, for attending this session. As indicated earlier on, I will uh, share with you the, the recording uh, and give you the, the recording. Uh, so that you can watch, go back and watch it. But also, uh, if there is anyone who is willing to, to test the system uh, using the dummy data that we have, uh, uh, please send me an email. Let me put my email in the email box. Uh, send me an email at uh, ipcconsultants.com and also copy bees at ipc consultants.com will be able to give you access so that you can go in there and create your own scorecard and play with the system and test it and see if it works for you uh, free of charge, no charge. We'll only give you a month to do that, uh, to play around with the data that is there. Uh, if you need anyone from any, any person from our side to take you through the process, uh, we'll be able to we'll avail someone from our, our IT uh, department to do that for you. Okay. 
So if for those that are, want to go on the system and test it now, please send me an email immediately. Then we can give you password to access the system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the day. Someone said I missed the email. Let me put it again. It's mgui at ipcconsultants.com. Uh, it's on the chat. If you look at the chat, it's there. If you can, maybe people need one more minute to copy the, to copy that. If you want to copy that, uh, and I'll put again bees uh, at at ipcconsultants. Uh, dot com copy that again you should be uh, able to uh, 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 to see to 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 send us an email okay uh, there is a question that says i see the score is negative 10 yeah on the score the score is negative 10 yes that's correct it's negative because the, the, the formula says actual over baseline target. Okay, so in actual fact, the score is actual over the difference between 80, uh, uh, 80 and 70. So, so it's uh, actual minus baseline divided by stretch target minus baseline. That's, that's how you get your, your performance. That's how you get that, uh, that negative that you are seeing there. But if you go to the simplified version, it will just use one target, not two. Uh, but if you, are using the, 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 if you are using the one target, the, the simplified model, there is no negative performance. But if you are using the baseline target, the more advanced target to give you a negative performance, which is it's just, it's just indicating that your performance is below the target. For example, if you look at this actual, it's actually below the target of 75. What it give you? It's giving you that, uh, that number. It's, it's, remember, this is. Uh, it's giving that actual is giving you uh, uh, um, is below 75. That's why it's in the negative because it's below the baseline. Anything below the baseline is, uh, goes into negative. That's why unless it's a, it's a, it's a unless the, the goal is to reduce, that's when you don't go into negative if you go below the baseline. That's what you're seeing there. Okay. Let me get there's another question. Can a scorecard apply to all employees from the lowest employee in the organization? The answer is yes, depends on uh, um, depending on your performance practice, you can have full scorecards for departments and employees. Yes, you can have full scorecards for everyone, but you may want to put some of the levels on the sim on the performance tracker, which is not complicated, which it does not have baseline stretch and things like that. You can actually do that. A simplified tracker. You can put it on the simplified tracker. Okay. Otherwise, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.